What's up guys? This lesson is for JavaScript intermediate developers. After taking this course, you should be able to develop an interactive website. Today's topic is titled JavaScript Scroll to Load More Content. There are websites that generate data based on user interactivity. A popular website is Facebook, where posts, comments, likes are being generated every day by over 1 million people. It is your duty as a developer to provide the right amount of information in order to improve performance, usability, time, and bandwidth data. In this episode, we shall focus on loading more content as the user scroll to the last section of the page. So back to our sublime test, we have a div tag and this div tag contains some elements. Also, we have given this div tag an overflow attribute of auto and an ID called my div and we have uniquely identified that particular div using get element by id so what we want to do for this particular episode is when the user scroll to the last section of this page we actually load more data since we are speaking on scrolling the first thing that i want to do is to listen to on scroll event that is occurring in the web page in javascript there is a particular event called the scroll listener that listening to scroll event. So what we want to do right now is to add an event listener that will listen to a particular event based on this div tag. So my div dot add event listener scroll. I will call will name a function let's just call it my page scroll so we'll create a function out of this function call the function name my page scroll remove the argument because we don't need it so the first thing that I want to do is to identify the position of the scroll so to identify it we use a property that is known as scroll top for now my scroll top is zero when i move it downward my scroll top starts counting from zero one two three and so on so for that we identify a variable i will call this variable scroll top or you can just simply name it my scroll top My scroll top will be equal to my div dot scroll top. Next thing, we want to identify the height of the scroll. So to do that, we have a variable. We we'll call it my scroll height. My scroll height will be equal to my div dot scroll height. So at this point, it is crucial for us to understand what we are doing before we move on. So for that, we'll just use our console.log to print out my scroll top, to print out my scroll top and my scroll height. Control S that and run that in your browser. So here we have in our browser. We'll open our developers console using Control Shift I, or you can easily click on this menu, go to your more tools, and hit on the developers tools Control Shift I. So immediately you get to your let, let me extend that. Immediately you get to your developers tools, you do a page refresh, and Okay, you can see some errors here, missing argument list. What is that? Oh, there's supposed to be a plus here. So thank you for alerting that for me. 
refresh and yeah so anytime you move this screw you can see my screw top is coming from four nine and and it's just increasing but the screw height remain the same so just look at this when i move it to the last part of the page look at what happened i have 798 height it remained the same but my screw top just changed to 598 so it actually tell me something that i can use this particular value to subtract this particular value that is 798 minus 598 so that is what i want to do now if I minus 798 from 598, I'm going to get a width. I'm going to get a height that is equal to this particular value. And it means something to me. So variable. Let's call this difference to be equal to my scroll height minus my scroll top. So when you minus this particular value, that is, I'm talking about minusing 798 from 598, you are going to get 200. And 200 is similar to our height that we have here. So for that, we need to get a variable that will give us the height of the particular div. So to get that particular variable, we'll call this height. That is, our height will be equal to my div dot client height. Client height is going to give us the original height of this particular div, which is 200. So I can easily check if the difference is equal to the height. Then we can start a page refresh. But for that, we'll just use our console.log. Um, and we'll call this particular one call ages to refresh. Control S that and let's check that in our browser. So I've just refreshed that and I'm taking it, taking it, taking it. When you get to the end, you will see call ages to refresh. But there's one thing about equal to. I'm not really an equal to fan, but you can use it because it's working fine. But me, I prefer something that will always work at all time. So to always get that particular thing that would work at all time, I have to use a less than. Now, when I use a less than, I can actually associate an off page height to this. So I'll call a variable off page height to be equal to, I can give it anything. So let me just give it five. So what will now happen is my height plus my off page height. Off page height. I'm just putting a two bracket there so that it can understand how to carry out the calculation so i'm not really a fan of equal to but you can try that i prefer using um less than greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to but when it comes to equal to itself i'm not really a fan of it that is why i'm doing it like this so refresh and run that again and you will see yeah call to call ages to refresh so with my page off page height i can increase it let me just say um 100 when i increase it to 100 just look at the position of where call ages refresh is going to occur it's nothing 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 okay before it gets to the end the call ages to refresh has already been executed Meaning that we can also increase this to 200, 500, or anything you want. So, there you have it. That is how you carry out page refreshing or loading more content when you scroll to the last part of the page. If you think that this particular code is a little bit easy for you, then you can try our 
JavaScript Mass versus AI class. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.